Dylan, Yo. here at your gym. First time I've been here, mate. Thanks for your time. First time I've been to Miguel's, man. Really appreciate your time. I know you've got a train, so we'll keep it quick. Lucas Brown, headlining at the O2 March 24. Tell me a little bit about the fight and what it means for you to be headlining. Means a lot to me. To, means a lot for me to be headlining. You know, I mean, it's what we work for is to try and become a, a main, a headline star. You know, that's where it's at in boxing to be in this. But um, but yeah, Lucas Brown, 25 or 26 and no undefeated guy, former world champion. You know, he's had his ups and downs out to the ring. Very controversial guy. Said some controversial things. Done some controversial things. But um, you know, um, all of that side, it's a good fight. He's a big puncher. Six foot five. You know, 23 knockouts out of our 25 wins. So, very dangerous fight. And it's, but these are the kind of fights I strive for, as you know, you know me. I like to get in there and have it. You know, this kind of fight where, you know, my last opponent came to run. I know Lucas Brown will try and run as well, but he won't have much chance to fight at some point. And, you know I mean, he, he's underestimating me, my power. And he will understand very soon. He, he admitted to us that what he said about the orangutan thing or the orangutan... Just, he said it was in poor taste. It, he shouldn't have done it. I take, I, I get the impression though it's going to take more than an apology for you to kind of brush that one under the carpet. You see, that's done. I, I had it in my mind. I got it off my chest, and that was it. You know, I don't like playing the race card or whatever, but that was it. I had need to say something about it. I said it, and that was that. You know, what I mean, like I said, maybe it was ignorance on his part or whatever. I don't know. You know, what I mean, um, he said his, his missus is black, this and the other his kids is of course. So. I don't know why. Maybe just a little bit of ignorance, or maybe he was on coke or something. I don't know. Maybe he was, he was been sniffing or something. I don't know. Dylan, you made it to this point. Uh, do you think you've been made to do it the hard way, though? Because I, the guy that sat down in my house in what, 2010, 2009, yeah. you know, was talking about the fact that you know amateur scene didn't want him. Then you got to be a pro. We all know your difficulties you've had there. It's taken a little while. Or is it, in Tunde Ajay's terms, everything timing? You know what? It takes 12 months to build a Kia, six to eight months to build a Rolls Royce. Simple as that, you know what I mean? So nothing good comes easy, you know? Nothing good comes easy. I'm not saying Kia's not a good car. I'd appreciate... I, 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 Some of them are decent still. You know, they're good cars. I'd appreciate, I, 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 I would appreciate one, actually. If Kia was doing a sponsorship, look me up, hey? No. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, everything takes time, you know what I mean? It's all about timing. Boxing's a hard sport to make a living from, what's just make it to the top. So it's a very hard sport. And I know that and I understand that, but I'm also a tough bastard and I don't give up easy, so, you know. I say that because in front of me now stands a very different man to the guy that I sat down with. And obviously you've matured, obviously you've evolved. Um, talk to me about being a serious sportsman now and some of the... Talk to me about, a little bit about that journey, evolving, maturing. It's just changing my lifestyle, you know what I mean? I understand, listen, I got into the sport the hard way. I never had no backing, no amateur pedigree. I got into the sport the hard way. I'm, uh, my rage and my anger carried me to a certain point and then I came and stuck with that. So then uh, 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 me being a realist and analysis with myself, I went and analysed myself and took myself away and realised I need to become more professional, get more professional people in and I got rid of some people and I made the transition and that's, that's, that's what you see in front of you now. It's still progressing every day, still so much more to come but I'm getting there. Well, you must be pleased with the fact that everything else has moved on and grown but Fans seem to tune into you because they know your fighting hearts there and they like your sense of humour as well. That ain't changed. You're still the same guy in that respect. No, listen, man, you, know, you just got to be yourself. One thing I, I know in life, if you're yourself, then no one, you know, you can't, if you're yourself and you believe in what you're doing, what you say, then you're not going to mess up or say wrong things or do wrong things. You know what I mean? You just got to be yourself and be honest with yourself and be real with yourself. It's as simple as that. That's all, you can, that's all a man can do. Just be as honest with yourself, with yourself as you can in life. Keep it real with the people. Give your time to the people who support you. That's, that's, all, that's all you can do, man. You know, and respect people. Treat everyone with respect. That's what I do. Does this brown fight go the distance? Well, no. I want to knock Brian out. He wants to knock me out. So I doubt it's going to go the distance. And I will be trying to knock him out. And he says he will be trying to knock me out. But one thing I learned from experience, people say, ah, oh, I'm going to go there and knock Dylan White out. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And when they get there, and they realise it's not as easy a task as they thought it was in the first place, then they change the way they fight and change the way they are. As you can see in the Lanius, like, Lanius is a strong, come forward guy, big puncher. But when he came to fight me, I connected a couple of times and he got in the back foot and ride, ride the fight out. So I don't know, but I definitely want to knock him out and I will knock him out. I just got a feeling that I will knock him out. He'll make the, he'll make the mistakes by underestimating me and underestimating my power. He says, oh, my power is not good. This, but 
then so it's just boxing talk. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Listen, Lucas Brown, he respects me, whatever he said. And he, and he, he, fears, he fears my power. I'm a work ethic. I'm a youth and other things. I'm a drive, I'm a drive also. So we'll see. In an ideal world, you come through this fight successful. You win this fight. What happens next? Because the next three or four fights are defining. This one is defining. Yeah, you know, since, since the, the defeat to Joshua, every fight's been vital and been the defining fight for me because I've been in a combat show. You know what I mean? I was very close to, to breaking through. I had beaten him. I, I would have been the man now, you know what I mean? So I understand what's at stake. This is a hard fight, and that's why I'm not overlooking this fight. I underestimate Lucas Brown. So, so we'll see. After this fight, I'm sure... A good performance, the fans will, will scream for me. That's a good thing about boxing. A good performance, the fans will scream for me and say what they think I deserve and what should happen next. So I leave it to you guys, man, and Ned Yearn and Sky Sports, I'm sure. You know what I mean? After this fight, no one can't say I'm not a content, I'm not a road level contender. I've never done it the hard way because I basically thought everyone knew something to fight. Good luck. <laughs>